questions did you have about these? 17, you got it. The two root 50 and root 100, that one. All right, so this is problem number 17. It's trying to be. So I have 2 root 50 times root 100. Okay. Root. Um, root 100 is what? 10. Okay. So we, we know root 100 is already, we already know this. This is just going to give me 10. So then that means we could rewrite this as 20 root 50. We're not done with the problem yet. I just wanted to make sure. We see root 100? Hey, it goes to 10. I could break uh, 50 down to 2 times 25. Okay, I could have 25 as 5 and 5, but does everyone recognize 25 as a perfect square? Yeah, what's the square root of 25? 5. So that means outside you have 20 times 5, and then you have root 2 that's still stuck underneath. That's left behind. So 20 times 5 is 100, I believe. So I get 100 root 2. Okay. What else would you like to see, my friends? Yes. 13. Can I move off this screen? Yeah, I'll just move down. 13. Root 11 times root 22. Okay, this one, because we don't have like a perfect square root going ta-da, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down, 11 won't break down, but I'm going to put it all under a radical. So 11 is just 11. That's a prime number. 22 is 11 times 2. Agreed? Yeah, so now I have the pair of 11s. 11 times 11 is 121. The square root of 121 is 11. The root 2 stays left behind. Oops, that's supposed to be a 2. So 11 root 2. What else did you see, my friends? Yeah. The, 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 sign, the last one hard. The root 3 and root 27? No. Or the Pythagorean theorem one? The, the theorem one. I, I didn't assign that one. Oh. So we'll ever actually we'll see that today. So I just gave 1 through 21. So it might have been tough because I didn't teach it. I apologize I didn't teach it. But I didn't assign it. That's okay. Anything else? Go on once. Yeah. Nine. Number nine. The root 125? Yeah. Okay. All right. So 125 is not a perfect square, but it might have a perfect square in it. So I'm going to think about this. Let's see. I know it's... Five. Divide by 5, I like that. So 5 times 25, okay, so I could technically say 5 times 5 times 5. So yesterday what I did is I said, hey, that, that would make a perfect square, so that's going to give me 5 root 5. Or you could realize, hey, that's a perfect square, so I get 5 root 5. So whichever way you choose to do it is going to be the same answer, okay? And what I would do is you're always going to have a calculator out. Not that I want you to go square root of something. I would like you to just go like 125 divided by 2. Nope, 125 divided by 3. Nope, 125 divided by 5. Oh, that worked. Okay. What else? We feel comfortable? Happy? It's good to see you all again. Um, will you get your notes out from last time? If you need an extra copy, I made a couple extra. So if you need copy but this will be let's see second page in anyone need a copy Whoop. man Austin everyone else is good We're good I didn't miss any I'm not missing a hand up right all right so let's continue on our adventure. You're looking for 
where it says SQE number three. I believe it's on the, the front of the second page, I think. Yes? Agree? And if I think if I sit here, I'm not really in anybody's way. Is that correct? So I got Alex on the opposite side. I can't see it, buddy. All right. Um, so let's think about this. Can I break 11 down any further? Can I break 5 down any further? So technically, this could be written like this. And being that neither of those can be broken down any further, you're just going to multiply them together. And that's going to give you root 55. And that problem is all done. Okay, it will not break down. Okay, if you have two numbers that won't break down originally, hey, Dan, will you put your phone away? Thank you. If you have two numbers that happen to be prime numbers, meaning it can't be broken down any further, those prime numbers, if they can't be broken down any further, even though if you multiply them together, if there's still two different prime numbers, that's not going to give you a number that's going to break down. It doesn't magically change the number. But this one, second one we're looking at, that's basically the same thing as 12 times 12, which is 144. Which is 144. And I don't need you to necessarily multiply it out. I love that you will multiply it out. But you realize you get the pair of numbers here. So the answer to this just comes out to be 12. Okay? Now, I am going to show a little bit more, a longer way to do something, but then we will start backing off of doing it the longer method. And it has to do with when we start having letters underneath a radical. Okay? So... First off, is everybody okay that square root of 25 is 5? So is everybody okay with that so far? Okay, now, this is where I'm going to start writing things down. x squared is the same thing as x times x. Agree? y to the 6th is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Agree? Now, yesterday, I said I was looking for two of a kinds, right? Yeah. Okay. So, is this a two of a kind? No. So, what comes out with the five because of the XX? There's an X out there now. Is this a two of a kind? If so, is this a two of a kind? And if so, is that a two of a kind? So how many two of a kinds of the y's did I pull out? Three. So that gives me y to the third. Did everything match up to be a two of a kind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this answer is done. There's no more, no longer a radical because I had perfect squares all the way through. Perfect squares are two of a kinds. Okay? So let's kind of rest on that one for a second. What... What basically did I do with those two of kinds? Like, I, I like this method here, but what if you had like x to the 50th power? Are you really going to write out x 50 times? No, I'm just going to So if I had two of them here and this only becomes one here, how many of these did I have originally? Six. And what relationship is 3 to 6? Half. So a square root means you take half of an exponent. A square root. So if it's like this, you get 6 and a 5. Yeah. A square root. Or a radical or a root. Takes half of exponent. Okay, so I think we can do that. All right, so let's look at the letter first on this next one. What do you think the square root of this y to the sixth would be? Y to the third. And that's a perfect square because you take half of the exponent, half of six is three. But then I still am left with square root eight. 
Yeah, turn 8 to 4 times 2. And then if I do 4 times 2, 4 is a perfect square. Agree? Yep. So then I get 2y to the third square root 2. And yes, you do want to have the number pre prior to the letter, but you want the radical at the end or the root at the end. Everybody happy with that? Any big mysteries up there? Good? Josh, you good? Yeah, buddy. All right, so so we we kind of made we kind of made a, a little bit of a rule, and I don't think we're this is an official math rule, but a square root takes half of an exponent. An exponent is the power that we do. So what if it like what if I had like x to the seventh power? X to the seventh would have to break down to x to the sixth x. X to the sixth, x to the first. And then you can take the half of x to the sixth. Somebody put uh, dirt in my coffee because it didn't taste good on that sip. Austin, would you come sprinkle dirt in there again? Okay. All right. You know what happens. It's kind of funny that way, though. All right. May I move on? How are we doing on notes? All right. So I got this, this one. Oh, and then here's that Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to talk about that and then this. All right. There we go. Yes, I did skip Pythagorean theorem last time. So find this problem, these problems. Do you see them? Yeah. Okay. So, so remember we said square roots or roots or radicals take half of an exponent. So in order to have half of an exponent, the exponent has to be an even number because 2 goes in even numbers, right? Okay. So, so just, let's see, hang on. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Agreed? And yes, we could have realized that 2 times 8 is 16, which is great. Oh, I had 1, 2, 3, 4. Does that make sense? It's very possible I made a mistake, but I... I thought I thought I counted this time just for you, my friend. All right, now friends, we said that rule last time was a radical or a square root or a root takes half of the exponent. So how many x's do I have underneath here? If I put them all underneath, five. Five. Can I take half of 5 and get a whole number? But could I take x to the 4th and x? Is x to the 4th and x to the 1st the same thing as x to the 5th if I put it back together? Does that make sense? Okay. What about y? Y, I just have y to the 3rd. How do I? Yeah, I got one left over. Good, I like it. Do you all agree with what I've done? Any part of that math that you're like, eh, hang on, buddy. All right, so remember we're looking, we, we know that this gives us a perfect square, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So what's the square root of 16? 4. 4. What's the square root of this? Uh, it would be uh, x squared. I heard it. Who said it? Yeah, x squared, x to the second. Good. What's the square root of this? Just y. All right, my friends. What do I have left underneath the radical or the square root sign? I have an x and a y. Is it okay if I have x to the first, or could I just have x? Yeah, I could just put x. Yeah, and x to the first works as well. So here's my entire answer. So there were a few things left behind, but I realized a square root or a radical sign or a root all means the same thing. 
I can take half of our exponent, which is the power that our letter is raised to. Okay. Oh boy. I'm pretty sure I'm okay having 10 outside right now. Hmm. Six is two times three. Well, I think it's a six. And then a five. I have two, three, and five on, uh, excuse me, under the radical. I got the hiccups right now. Must be that dirt in the coffee. You take out and then you have five y's in the same direction. Okay, so I have x squared because I have xx, so I have x squared. How many y's do I have? Five. But if I wanted to break down y to the fifth, could I have y to the fourth and y? Agreed? Yes, sir. Oh, because x to the first times x to the first is x squared. Does that make sense? Hey, I have that two, three, five underneath. Do I have any? Do I have any pairs on two, three, and five? No, so 2, 3, and 5 are going to stay underneath. Agreed? I have the x squared, so joining the 10 is going to give me an x, because I take half of x squared, so I get x to the first. And how much? 2 of the y's, y squared. So I'm left underneath with 2 times 3 times 5, which is 30. And, and a y. Done. Some people might be like, why did you make your radical sign so big? I don't know. Everyone still with me? We're happy? All right. I think we're doing all right on time. Holy crow, we're doing really well on time. All right. My friends, you have all seen the Pythagorean theorem at some point in your educational process. Agreed? Now, it might not have been this year, but it might have been one of the years in that awkward formative years that we called middle school. Remember that strange social experiment that happened? Middle school is strange for everybody. It really is. I only had two years of it because we had, we called it junior high, so it was seventh and eighth grade. I think some of you had 6th, 7th, and 8th. Did anyone just have 7th and 8th? Yeah, it was a strange social experiment. They do, yeah. 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 Yeah, there's all kinds of... I'm, gl I'm just glad... I find this easy, what I do here. I don't want to ever be in a position where it's like, okay, we're going to do this this year. I don't want to be in that position. I like what I do with y'all. I have fun with it. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared plus c squared, where a is a leg, so I get leg squared, b is also a leg, and c is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest leg of, or the longest side of a right triangle. And the reason why this starts becoming into effect is the Pythagorean theorem and radicals do go hand in hand. Now, there are things called Pythagorean triples, which are relationships of three whole numbers that actually work. So three and four and five makes a right triangle. It's called the Pythagorean triple. And there's an infinite amount of Pythagorean triples. When you get the geometry, they want the three, four, five is kind of the go-to. Then the next one is the 5, 12, 13. And there's just so many of them. But just kind of be aware. So the Pythagorean theorem, it's based on this, the relationship. Um, I do this as well. When I've taught geometry. Does this kind of make an arrow? Did I make an arrow? So the arrow points to the hypotenuse. I know it's goofy but sometimes it might help you out. If you just can't remember where the hypotenuse is, realize that the little square in the corner, which means it's a 90 degree angle, you can make an arrow out of it and it points to the hypotenuse. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. 
So this first one is going to be leg squared, so 7 squared plus 3 squared. Oh, you're getting too big. Equals C squared. 49 I agree with. What's 3 squared? I don't know. I did 7 times 9. It happens. You got it. You got it. So 7 squared is 49. 3 squared is 9. So then I get 58. So watch this, my friends. I get 58 equals C squared. So in order to undo C squared, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. All right, so let's take root 58 and see if we can break it down into some exact numbers. So let's see, 58 is the same thing as 2 times 29, agreed? Does 29 break down any further? No. Does 2? No. No. So my answer to the first one is square root 58. That's my hypotenuse. Again, we talked about exact values yesterday. Exact values are indeed important. Okay? So we have a nice exact value of square root 58. So we'll call this, this was the first one. Second problem I have this unknown, so I have an a squared, so it's where the a is. plus 5 squared equals what? 8, eight squared. So, so I can square the 864 <laughs> minus 25. Okay, okay, hang on, you're getting ahead of me. I love it. Uh, you're getting ahead of me, though. 25, 5 squared is 25. 8 squared is? 64. 64. All right, friends, how do I get a by itself? What should I do to both sides? I agree. Subtract 25. Everyone else agree? This is an A. That's a 5. This is also an A. That just came down. All right, so I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. I don't know. We have A squared over here on the left. That's going to give me a 9... 39. So how do I get A? How do I turn A squared into A? I have to take the square root. Go root root. I don't think you can break down 39. Yeah, 39 is what? 3 and 13? Oh, yeah. Is it 3 and 13, I think? And 3 and 13 are both prime. So we come up with my A value being... The square root or root or radical 39. So that's what this side would be. That helps you with the problem you got confused on last night, huh? All right, are we doing okay? Two problems left. So down here, I am missing my B side. So I have 4 squared plus B squared is equal to 7 squared, because 7 is a hypotenuse. Agreed? 4 squared, help me out. Uh, 16. 16? 49. And then 49, that's B squared. Come on, stir up. B squared equals 49. We doing all right? All right, Maddox, you're doing great. Everyone agree with Maddox? Subtract 16. So those cancel, so I get B squared, 49 minus 16. How do I get B by itself, friends? Uh, you divide. Don't divide, take the square root, or a root, or a radical, so root, root. You get a prime number, so 3 and 11. Yeah, so this breaks down to 3 times 11, which won't break down any further, so my B side is root 33. Again, these are exact values. We talked about the importance of exact values when we start sending people to Mars. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Yes? Why does the prime in front of the 33? Well, we just wanted to see if it could break down. Okay. We, so remember how like we took like root 8 and we made it 2 root 2? That's what we were trying to do, see if it would break down. And it, it didn't. That's not all question. Yeah, so, so sometimes we, I, I think on this next one, we're going to see that it will break down. 
but sometimes it will just it won't break down to any perfect squares. So like if you had say uh, say it came out to root 50, that's 25 times 2, so you got 5 root 2 for an exact answer, you wouldn't leave it as root 50. So that was what we were doing yesterday, right? All right, ready? 5 squared, agree? 25. It's 25. 12 squared is? 144. And C squared. I'm looking for my hypotenuse, agreed? Yeah, you can, uh, 125, 144, 169. Okay, hang on, let me write down. You're going to go too fast for me, and my, my computer won't stay up with my writing if I go too fast. 25 and 144 is how much? 169, I believe. <laughs> I, I do agree. 169, 5 times 4 is 9. 2 times, or 2 plus 4 is 6. 169. My friends, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Agreed? Root root. Is 169 a perfect square? 13 times 13 is it? So I just come up with 13. So this C value is 13. Okay? All right, friends. So I don't make the error. Evens or odds? Odds? I'll do that. Okay. All right. So we are going to do SQE, SQE, number three. Was it odds? So my friends, we have plenty of time. Let's start on it now. Let's get to, into a rhythm that we're starting at. Because my goal is I want you to have a minimal amount of homework. So my lessons are a smidge shorter. And then we get to start the homework. If you get it done, that means you don't have homework to do tonight and you get the points in class tomorrow. Sound like a deal? No, it's not free time, friends. Come on.